All right, I'm officially recording the computer. Um, basically what we're talking about tonight is um, like a vision for your team. And so how, while I was even putting, and uh, when I say a vision for your team, I'm talking about your team, like not this team that is currently, that you're currently looking at. Although some of you are looking at people that are on your team. That's beside the point. The whole idea is just envisioning who your team is, what you're trying to build, what legacy you're trying to leave, just the whole nine yards. And so everyone knows, everyone knows that goes back to your story. And I was actually sitting in my car today after my doctor's appointment and I started um, talking to my Instagram stories, just like, you know, we do, cause that's what normal people do, right? And I was just talking about how I remember as a mom, like treating myself like crap, like not just not taking care of myself, but like literally eating junk because it was quick, um, staying up late because I was just honestly just not even paying attention. I wasn't being responsible. Like I was not being an adult. Um, and just, I just kind of like gave people that little backstory because that's what drives my vision. I then went forward to say that my vision is seeing moms take care of themselves because it is so much more fun and I have so much more joy serving my family as a result of taking care of myself than I do when I don't, when I treat myself like crap. Like I can always tell, and this week has been one of them, I'm coming off of the pregnant, the first trimester carb I mean, complete carb overload. Um, and I'm finally like, like tonight I had only protein and veggies and I was so excited and I wanted it. I didn't just force feed myself. Like I wanted the chicken and I wanted the peppers. So like I'm coming out of that and I'm feeling better. And I just was like, I don't know, like that's my vision for my team is seeing women not treat themselves like crap. And I know that sounds so funny, um, but honestly for women to see their value, for women to understand that like it does matter what kind of mindset you're in when you want to serve your family or your friends or your students or the people you work for. Like it totally matters how you treat the person serving those people. And so just reminding women that they have value, even again, like if I could ever say what my vision is, it's going back to the Proverbs 31 woman from the first time I read that passage going bull crap she does not exist to finally going okay god i am open to you making one of these women out of me because i'm finally to a place where i'm ready to treat myself like this woman like isn't that insane you can t you can become the proverbs 31 woman only if you believe you can. And I know that sounds so like, so mindset-y, so woo-woo, all that stuff, but you do, you have to at least take the steps to say, okay, God, like help me become her. Help me, help me rise up while it's yet dark, even though like I'm a night owl, help me, um, serve people, help me make wise business investments. Cause I don't know if you guys have ever actually read the Proverbs 31 woman. She was a boss. This is not some, some woman that just took a bunch of flack that just like said, oh yes, please trample all over me. Like she was equal with her husband. They worked together. He was praised at the gates. She was doing all of this work, but it was not a trample on situation. It was, it's a beautiful, beautiful picture of what a woman should be. And so when I first started reading that, I was just like, oh my gosh, like what if, what if the Bible's like true or something? And like, we really could do this. And then God was like, hey, idiot. Not really. He doesn't call people idiots. But he was like, hey, <laughs> hey, blind spot. Let's knock that down. It is true. And I wouldn't lie about you. Like, why would I tell you you can do something if you couldn't do it? And it was just a very big moment for me to go like, oh, my gosh, do you know how many women are in my boat? And so this, like all these things are this, are just this vision for my team and for me. So I say all of that to say, what's yours? Like what makes you like crazy excited? And I, I really like as crazy as this is, you may have to put your phone down for an entire day and do nothing business related for you to figure out what that is. Totally backwards sounding. 
don't go to other coaches accounts to try to figure out what your vision is. Don't even, don't even listen to my story to try to figure out what your vision is. You like genuinely take an entire weekend. If you're feeling super bogged down, super frustrated, like you cannot figure out who you are, what it is that God is calling you to do right now, take a couple days off social media, like literally delete the things from your phone and only use it like as an actual phone, you know, to look up recipes and call people and text people only use it for those things. And I guarantee by the time Monday rolls around or even Sunday evening, you'll be like, okay, like I know what I'm made to do. We just, we have to, you have to get rid of the noise from other people. So step one, find your vision. Now you can't just start immediately talking about your vision for your team. Your vision has to start with your, with your bod groups. Um, and I say that because that's what our business centers around is helping women get healthy and creating that community there first. If you do not have a healthy bod group community, then you do not need to move on to recruiting your team. However, put this in your back pocket. This it, Just because you don't have a bot, an active bod group of your own does not mean this call is not for you. Your bod group becomes your team. It just does. It's just how it works. So you you create and curate this bod group to be everything you want it to be. And your team will follow that because who wants to be part of a team that they don't even like the bod group of, you see what I'm saying? So you have to have this idea. And like, I mean, like go all in, like, what do you want to teach these women? How do you want to pour into them? If you could only have two weeks with these women, what would you want them to walk away knowing? All right. Like, like think that way think I've got two weeks with this girl to really show her what it is that we do. And guys, I'm so convicted even saying this right now, because let's be honest, my first trimester literally kicked me in the face like a horse and my bod groups suck um, on a personal level. And so like, I'm talking to myself right now, but you have like, let's say you've got someone sign up. You've got two weeks to really show this girl her worth, her value, or whatever it is that your mission is for this girl to see, you got two weeks to do that. And not really, but I'm just saying like within two weeks, they're going to know what you stand for and what you don't. They're just going to, going to figure that out pretty quick. Um, so what is that? What is that you want to do? What is it you want to impart with them? How do you want to change them forever? All right. So your bod group has to relay that. So from there, you're going, okay, like I've got a good bod group. I'm ready to start talking about a team. And so here are my, I'm going to give you four steps to building. And, and really, I want you to put yourself where you are. Like, let's say you're like, okay, I'm not, not building a team yet. I'm building a bod group. This is still four tips for helping you build a bod group. These work for both. Okay. The very first thing and don't roll your eyes at me, is personal development. If you come to me, I'm a tough love person, by the way, tough love. If you come to me and you're like, Lauren, like things just aren't clicking. I have no motivation or this has happened or things got hard or whatever. I'm going to ask you what your personal development is because I guarantee that's where the weakness is. You are only as good as your mindset is like you, if you are not building yourself up, I want you to understand if you're not growing, you're actively decaying. That's just how, that's how humans work. It's how our mind works. It's how our bodies work. How everything is how everything works. If you are not actively building, if you're not actively growing, seeking, whatever, then you are more than likely in a downhill slope in some capacity. Now, sometimes life can really suck the tar out of you. That's not correct. But that's where I'm going with that. Life can just, it can, it can just suck. And it like, I'm not even going to pretend that. And I was actually listening to a podcast the other day, um, yesterday, where she made a, such a good point. Her podcast is called For the Fun of It. And she literally was talking about how she as an Enneagram seven, which I don't do much with the Enneagram, but she's an Enneagram seven, which literally means she assesses every situation in her life with how fun is this going to be? But she was talking about how sometimes when life sucks, is it insincere 
to also be looking for what's fun. Like if you're walking through a really dark moment, is it stupid and silly to be looking for what's fun? And her, she, she kind of wrestled with that. And she was like, no, because you're allowed to do both. You're allowed to absolutely experience whatever you're experiencing and also experience growth or joy or fun or whatever it is that you need in that moment. So even if you're walking through a really, really tough time, you can still find some sort of personal development that will meet you where you are. Um, for some people, it may be just like an emotional mindset. Uh, one that I want to really recommend if you really struggle with getting down on yourself is called, um, oh my gosh, I hate when I do this. What is this book called? Something about your inner mean girl. I have it on audible. I can, it's like silence your inner mean girl or something like that. And she just really talks about how she gets into these spirals where she's, I'm a failure. I suck. This is terrible. I, I can never do anything. And then all of a sudden she's like, no. And so she starts asking, she's got this like method where she asks herself these questions for herself out. For some of you, like, this is me. I'm like, what difference is my daily tracker going to make today? Like, who cares if I don't check off this, this part of my tracker, if I don't do these invites or whatever, a book like the slight edge or the compound effect would be good for you because that's the one I get sucked into the most of what difference will X, Y, Z make, um, which those seem like such small actions or such annoying actions, honestly. Um, but those are the things, those are the things, those are the business activities. So the slight edge or the compound effect, but honestly, guys, if you're just like, I don't really have time to read a book. I don't have audible. I don't want to pay for anything. The national wake up call. If you skip through all that stuff at the beginning, cause I know it can be a really big time suck. If you have, or if you're short on time, skip to like minute 15. And those are the, those are the things I built the foundation of my business on. And I still listen to those. The national wake up call is going to be your best bet if you can only do one thing. Um, and so find a book, find a reading group, do something with personal development. Um, another book that is very long, but very good is by Brendan Burchard. And again, I can't think of the name of it. I can send you guys some resources after that, after this, but Brendan Burchard, anything he writes is solid gold. And I'm the girl for the job by Jess Connolly, or you're the girl for the job. Excellent book. Um, so seriously, find a book. There's so many good ones, so many good ones and latch onto that. Um, now you, here's another tough love, tough love. Let's say you're like, but I can't do this. Or I can't do that. Or this isn't working. Well, again, this is a PD thing, but here's what's really cool is you're the only one that can dig yourself out of whatever hole you're in. If your social media sucks, like if you, and you need to do this, if you go to your social media and pretend like it's someone else's, it's really easy to see your weak points. Guess who has the power to change that? You do. Or if you're not hitting success club, again, this really tough love. I hope you guys all don't hate me when you get off the call, but guess who has the power to find more people and invite them? You do. It's just all about that mindset behind everything. And so I really want to encourage, that's an encouragement, is that no one else can do this for you, which means no one else can let you down. You have the power to level up in the areas that you need to level up in. And you can usually find a personal development book to help you get through that. Another thing I want to tell you guys too, is to find a success partner. Uh, find someone who's shooting for a similar goal as you. And sometimes that means going to the Beachbody Champions page or something and saying, hey, I'm looking for someone who's also shooting for Diamond. Anyone want to be my success partner? And then you really do have to vet the people because sometimes you get some weirdos. I'm just going to be totally real with you. But it's so easy to find a success partner. Um, another thing, this is all still number one, PD, mindset, all of it. Success is a choice. All right. So you have the power to dig yourself out of the hole. But another aspect of that is that success is a choice. I could have and almost in multiple times decide not to work this business. But the thing that chewed at me the most other than other than truly feeling called by God was just that I quit because it was hard. 
And I, I just couldn't live with that. Knowing that I had the opportunity to change my family's life, to change y'all's lives, to change my health and fitness, just because I didn't feel like doing the business activity tracker, or just because I didn't feel like getting better at social media, or just because I didn't feel like trying to grow my social media following, whatever it was that I was really struggling with at the time. Like I just couldn't live with, well, it was hard because here's the thing. I knew if I was going to quit this, like, and I'm not saying beach body is the only thing that can like change your finances or change your health. I'm not saying that, but I knew that if I quit this, I'd quit everything else. Like it was, it just became to me, this all became a, am I finally going to stick with something and do it and do it well and do it right and serve people. And so like that success was a choice. I remember sitting at summit, which please, God, please let there be a summit this year. But I remember sitting at summit and I said, that girl, and cause here's the thing, when you go to summit, you get these tags and it tells people if you're like a success club legend, which means it's like 24 months in a row or success club 10 legend, or if you're a Ruby or a diamond, like you wear these tags that kind of like, let you know what, where everybody stands. And I remember like looking at tags going, you're a success club 10 legend. And I don't mean that hatefully, but I just had this idea of like only the, the rock stars with the fake boobs and the tiny waist and the big, like awesome, thick, butt. you know, like I just had this idea that only those people could be success club legends and only those women with like perfect platinum hair and volume and blowouts could be, you know, 15 star diamond coaches. So when I started seeing people that looked like me doing these things, I was like, what the heck? I had been lied to and I, it was me, I, I lied to me. And so it was just this moment of like, they just chose to do it and I'm just being lazy and choosing not to do it. And so I just want you guys to understand, yeah, Sarah, you have been to a summit. You know exactly what I'm talking about where you look around and you're like, these people are hitting success club. Like, I got this, I totally got this. And like, it all of a sudden just becomes a choice. Um, Emerald's a choice. Like I'm going to call out, she's not even on the call right now, but I guarantee this also applies to some other girls on this call. Um, but Emily Phillips advanced to Emerald two weeks ago and it was because she chose to like literally because she was like, I want to be Emerald. I want to go on this trip. So she asked her, one of her clients if she wanted to be a discount coach and she enrolled her husband and she was Emerald because it was a choice. And was it hard? Yeah. Did it require growth? Oh yeah. It freaked her out so much like she was sending me all these messages like okay I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it she's gonna sign up she's gonna do it and all these things and I remember that like I so remember that feeling of just like uh, but she did it it was a decision that she made and she did it and here's a fun fun fact diamond is just going emerald eight times no sorry excuse me four times less than that diamond is going emerald four times that's all it is and so when I looked at it that way, I was like, oh, then here's the fun part. <laughs> you only have to get to diamond. Then you help your coaches get to diamond. Now, is it really that simple? Like, am I just being like, oh yes, like <laughs> just sneeze and you'll be diamond. Like that, no, it does take work. It takes investment. It takes time. It takes that compound effect slight edge mentality, but it's literally you going emerald, four times and then you having two coaches that you help go enrolled and then your diamond and then from that point you become a one-star diamond by your coaches going diamond you become a two-star diamond by another coach going diamond you only have to go diamond once isn't that insane that's all you have to do now I'm not saying you go diamond and you stop working your business because then it will tank it will tank you have to continue working um, I actually was listening to another coach in the, I think she's like the top four coach, Jess Dukes, but she said, don't be married to your rank, be married to the actions. And I loved that because so many times girls will say, I hit diamond. And then it's just like, it's gone because they were married. They were so set on that rank that they forgot that they still have to do the actions. And so don't marry yourself to that rank marry yourself to the actions, then you'll hit that rank. You'll stay there. 
You might drop for a second. That's very normal. And then you'll build it again and you'll build it stronger and you'll build it stronger. And then your coaches will build that because they're going to see you taking the actions. And it's literally this whole business is literally the business activity tracker. Which it doesn't matter which one you use. There's a million out there. You can use one straight from Beachbody or the one I give you guys or whatever, but it's just doing those actions over and over and over with joy. <laughs> because if you're, again, don't treat yourself like crap. If you're treating yourself well, you're going to serve people really well. Um, number two, I'm kind of jumping around, but number two is to just set the standard. All right. So let's, let's talk fitness. We're talking on a fitness level here. I'm not even going to talk about you recruiting coaches who are working yet. Let's just talk about you have two clients that are under you and they are working out and they're doing, one's doing morning meltdown and one's doing autumn's new program. You have to set the standard for them. If you stop showing up for your workouts for two weeks and stop just showing up to even in the challenge group and you don't schedule your posts and blah, 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 they're going to drop off the face of the earth. It's going to be really hard to get them to start back up if you dropped off the face of the earth. Now, am I saying there's no grace and if you drop off, you should quit and blah, blah, blah. No, there is, there is some good to being a real person and saying like, Hey, you know what? I got really off track or last week was stupid busy and I didn't have my priorities straight or whatever. Um, or there's health issues. Like we all know there's health issues. Just kind of at least communicate that with your people, but set the standard because your people, whether this is workout or team wise, they're only going to do half of what you're putting out. So if you're showing up to your workouts every single day, like you're supposed to, not like seven days a week, but you're showing up for your workouts and you're sticking with your schedule, you can expect for your challengers to only do half of that, for them to just kind of show up, for them to just kind of do their nutrition. That's just the way that it goes. I, I hate it, but it's just human nature. Same thing with like coaching. Like if I want, like this is just what they say. This is just what the leaders in the business say. If you want your coaches hitting success club five, you better be hitting success club 10. And that's just the way it is. Like your output has to be almost double what you expect or ask of your coaches. And of course we don't ask those things of our coaches to be selfish. We ask those things of our coaches so that they can build a business that they told us they wanted to build. And so we have to set the standard, set the example, raise the bar, go ahead. I want you tonight. This is going to be hard. It's going to hurt yourself a little bit because I hate when I do this to myself go rate yourself on how good of an employee you would be. Like, would you fire you? Because I'll be honest, there have been moments where I'm like, dang, Lauren, I would have fired your butt two weeks ago if you were an actual employee of mine. And so rate yourself on how you're doing, either as a coach for your clients or as a coach for your team. Um, and also, I'm just going to, no, I'm not. I'm going to wait. Number three is set expectations for your coaches or your clients as they are onboarded. If you don't have a new coach, or sorry, let's start with clients. If you don't have like a new client PDF, do you think you're going to feel very confident inviting people to do these workouts with you? No, because then when they say yes, you're going to be like, what, what do I do? They just said yes. They're like ready to buy. And I sent them a link and they did it. And now what do I do? Like it makes you panic. But if you're like, hey girl, as soon as you enroll, I have this new client PDF that I'm going to send you. It's going to walk you through how to access your workouts and how to get to nutrition. And there's even a video link where I explain how it goes. Like you're feeling like a boss when you do that, right? And so that helps you invite. I swear to you guys, the day that my business changed was when I created my own PDF and my own welcome video. And I just sucked it up and learned how to use YouTube and Zoom and record to my computer and upload to YouTube. That was the day my business changed because I took ownership and I, I had something for people when they enroll. And it's the same, I do, it's literally the same thing with my coaches. So like you can transfer that to your coaches and say, hey girl, you know, like I know we've been talking about coaching and you're excited and I'm so excited for you. I have a new coach PDF that will train you on how to get started in the business. And it comes with some videos embedded within the links. It literally walks you through it at your own pace. Like, again, I am ready for this girl. She is at peace knowing that I'm ready for her. She knows exactly what her next steps are. I know exactly what the next steps are. And those things matter. 
So like, if you're like, you know, and I'm not going to waste time on this call doing this, you guys can send me a message after, but if you want to know exactly what I send, let me know and I can send it to you and then you can tweak it yourself. Um, so I can definitely do that for you. It's just, it's, it's everything in changing your confidence in your inviting. Cause I hated inviting when I was unprepared for a yes. I was always prepared for a no. No's were easy. I wanted no's. Yes. Okay. So yeah, next month, girl, I'll hit you up next month. Now I'm good. I'm off the hook. I don't have to do any work. Now did I, I mean, it sucked. I didn't hit success club, but it was awesome. I didn't have to do any work. So set yourself up for winning and set them up to win when they enroll. And number four, and I'm hoping to keep this under 30 minutes. Number four is just the vitals. Again, that business tracker is your beach body Bible. Do the things on the tracker. If you don't understand how to do something on the tracker, reach out to your upline and ask them to explain it. Um, you, again, you're not married to the rank that you're seeking. You need to be married to the actions that get you to that rank. Um, one of the things that Rachel Mitchell, who's one of my bits, she's kind of my success partner, if we're going to be honest. But one of the things that she always echoes is how she prays. She literally prays to God. And I've started this too and asks him to help her love the business activity tracker. Lord, help me love those small, tiny, nitty gritty, annoying details. Let me enjoy checking in with my clients. Let me enjoy sending those invites. Let me enjoy putting out that story that's going to help that mom figure out what she's making for dinner tonight. Like she, it's those little things that you have to find joy in. They do. Yeah, they take up time. You don't get paid for them immediately. There's not an immediate payout, but there is such a huge payout at the end, you know, as you, as you go on. So I just really want to encourage you guys with that. Um, the very last thing I want you guys to do before we hop off this call is I want you like, you should be able to, if I ask you, what's your goal right now with your business, you should know that. And you should be able to verbalize exactly what you want and why you want it, um, which is part of that coach game plan planner that I give you guys the link to when you enroll. If you don't have that because you're not in my immediate downline, I can send that to you, but you need to know what your goal is. And that can be like for me right now, if you're going to say, Lauren, what's your goal? My goal is to get my second CVC back to diamond. That's my goal. And my, and, and you need to have it time bound. Right. And my goal is to have that done, um, starting on April 1st, because that's the start of a new quarter. And I want to hold that for six weeks and I want to get that bonus and I want to be two star for six weeks. And that is why, and, and the reason why I want to do that is honestly, cause I want to buy baby stuff. If I'm going to be totally honest with you guys, I want to use my bonus to buy some baby stuff. And so there's my goal. And I want to know what your goal is. Is that emerald? And when do you want to hit emerald? Is it diamond? And when is it that you want to hit diamond? Why do you want to hit diamond? Why is that significant for you? See what I'm saying? So give me those things. And of course, you don't have to actually give me those things, but just I want you to know the answer to that. So if you want to, um, I, well, what I want you to do is to message your upline and tell her your goal. You don't have to tell me. Now, in my case, I didn't have an upline that worked the business. My like top three uplines, none of them worked it. So I had to go all the way to my fourth great grandma in the business. And I had to be like, hey, I'm gonna be honest, I'm an orphan, I need help. And I had to communicate those goals to her so that she could even hold me accountable. So reach out to your most active upline. Hopefully it's your actual upline, I'm hoping, I'm praying but reach out to your upline and tell her, hey, I have real goals for this business. I have a real dream that I want to reach and here is why, okay? I want you to tell her what rank you want, when you want it and why you want that rank, all right? Can you do that? There's your homework. What rank you want, when you're gonna hit it and why you want that rank. And if you don't, let's be real, if you don't have a goal, um, like, let's say you're like, what if I don't care? Well, then figure out what you're doing. <laughs> and I say that with all the love, like figure out what it is that you want. 
For some of us, it's not rank. For some of us, it's just to stay here. For some of us, it's just to like keep working. But if you're wanting to build this business, I want to know what rank you want, or maybe even if you want to go the elite route, which that's a different call for a different time where you want to be team builder, team leader, premier elite, that can also be part of it. But anyways, and if you're like, hey, I don't, I don't really know what I want my goal to be because I don't really understand why, why you would want to be emerald, why you'd want to be diamond. That's another conversation for you to have with your upline. Um, and if they don't really know, then just come straight to me because I geek out over that topic. So thanks for showing up. I kept it 30 minutes. I'm so jacked. Any questions? Thank you, Kayla. I think it's mastering your inner mean girl. There it is. All right, find some PD, tell your upline what your goal is, when you're gonna hit it, and why you wanna hit it, okay? Good night, you guys. Thanks for hopping on.